Hi, I'm Sarah Swan and I create videos to help people with their mental health. Today's video is about dismissive avoidance. Now, this is one of the insecure attachments and I have another two videos actually. I have one that does kind of like a glance of what attachment theory is and the different um, attachment styles and then I have another one that's a little bit more in depth and then I also have these videos that go really into depth. Um, my goal with my channel is to um, create videos to help people establish and, and, and go deeper with the relationship with themselves and the relationship of others. And so my videos are all about kind of attachment and about how to, how to gain that relationship. So what is dismissive avoidance? So um, like the anxious attachment individual, people that are dismissive avoidance, they might have low self-esteem. They might have low confidence, um, but they don't necessarily know. Um, it's kind of repressed. And this is seen by them doing the opposite. So I was actually fearful avoidant, which meant I had a little bit of anxious and a little bit of um, avoidant. And so when I was more avoidant, I literally, it was masked through my overachieving and it was masked through my elated sense of self and my perfectionism. And so oftentimes I had to be the best. I had to get the best grades. I'd be the best at work. And um, in reality though, I had a very low self-esteem, very low self-worth, confidence in myself. And um, if I didn't achieve the best, I felt that I wasn't good enough. And so a lot of times this is masked through them overachieving. Um, so again, so this basically goes into this idea that they don't necessarily see their flaws. Um, they, they might see them like they don't want them to see them. They don't want themselves to see it. They also don't want other people to see that. And um, they have a positive view of themselves. Um, sometimes it's very elated very, very higher than what it really, really is. So they're, it's kind of skewed. Um, this leads into the idea of black and white thinking. I think this can apply, this applies to the other insecure attachments as well. So black and white thinking, again, either or, I am either good or I am bad. Um, and so this goes into the kind of idea of having that elated sense of self because they think they have to be this um, versus like you can be both. You can be, you can be not good good at something and that's okay it's not based on your self-worth so um oftentimes people that are avoidant are attracted to people that are anxious so if you because because a lot of times it's kind of a polarized kind of opposite you know the magnets north and south but it's also this idea that they're very avoidant right well underneath underneath this avoidance there's a repressed anxiety well people that are anxious they're very anxious, but guess what's repressed? It's their avoidance side. And so a lot of times these two types are attracted to each other. Um, if you are avoidant, you're probably not in touch with your emotions. So many times, I know I did, I put up walls. I had these rigid boundaries and I, I wasn't exactly paying attention to how I was feeling. And because I wasn't paying attention to how I was feeling, I wasn't paying attention to how other people were feeling. I know when I was in a relationship, I've had many times and I feel, I mean, I, I basically had to, <laughs> I had to um, forgive myself for some of this, but like when I was more avoidant, my partner would have something happen and I honestly didn't care. I was a doing machine rather than a being machine um, and I wasn't in touch with my emotions and I wasn't in touch with his and so this can kind of happen where you're just not in touch and you, you don't know and, and it makes it hard because if you're attracted to someone who's more anxious, they're in touch with their emotions and they're expecting you to be in touch with their own emotion, with your, you know, to be able to pay attention to their emotions and, and reciprocate it, but you're not able to, which causes some problems. Um, another thing is um, to go along with this whole perfectionism kind of thing, you don't like vulnerability. So you don't want people to see your flaws. Um, it's kind of like, um, and, and, and again, it's like the perfectionism and the overachieving. And I know we kind of sort of touched on that. Um, 
you're also independent and very self-reliant. So you don't like to depend on, upon others. You don't think other people can help you. You don't like to ask for support. You don't like to ask for, um, you don't trust them essentially. I know with me, I often had this idea that I got from a little kid that if something bad happened to me, no one would be there to support me. No one would be there to help me. And so I learned at a very young age that I just had to cope myself. And I did. I remember being in elementary school, things would happen. I remember I had this thought, like I was getting picked on. And I had this thought, like, and I tried to ask for help. I remember I asked for help the one time and my parents didn't really give me help. And so the next day, rather than get asking for help, I just stuffed it down. And I was like, you know what? I'll just deal with myself. And, um, but you know, it's like this idea that you can't depend upon another person. Um, and, and this is good in a way, but it's also bad because we, we are social creatures and, um, we, we need other people. So we need to have to have, you know, it's like this idea of de dependence and in independence at the same time. So, um, another thing is if you're avoidant, you probably hate conflict. So conflict kind of makes you feel bad and it kind of like brings up emotions and you don't want other people to see that. You don't want them to see the flaws. And a lot of times you might actually self blame yourself for this. You might blame yourself for things and have this criticism about yourself, but you, it's kind of so repressed that sometimes that criticism goes outside where you like see it in another person be like, they're doing that and I hate that. Um, and so you might, um, you might not like conflict and um, you might blame yourself for things like that, like hate criticism because you'll feel like it's kind of a direct attack to you. I know with my art, when I was more avoidant, I would, if someone said, oh, you should fix this, or I was actually an English major at one time and someone would give me um, a document and you know, I wrote something and they, the professor would tell me stuff to fix. And I remember I took that as self-criticism, as in I'm not good enough and this is a flaw. I don't want to see my flaws. I want to be better, you know, and, and rather than taking it as a self-growth and that you could learn from it and you can improve and they're not criticizing you. They're just, you know, your work is not you, essentially. So um, another thing is rigid boundaries. So you might seem detached and cold. Again, that goes back with the whole emotional thing, not being able to pay attention to your emotions and emotions to others. Um, you may not know the needs of others. So you often know the needs for yourself, but you may not know it of others. I've seen this, um, I met this person who, he was definitely not attuned to me. I, I could tell. Um, I didn't, obviously I was aware of what was going on because I've been studying all the attachment stuff, but. Um, he was definitely not attuned to me. So you may not be attuned to other people and um, you just may not be aware. Um, you you tend to be very logical, um, a very great problem solver. Um, and I do see these individuals because I do know from the platforms that I'm on, sometimes they can be criticized as being not the best attachment. And... Um, I do see these individuals as being very loving and caring. They can be very loving and caring and very supportive. And I've also noticed that they can be really great listeners. So um, I wanted to hit some positives too, because <laughs> you know I think all these attachment, um, insecure attachments have positives and negatives. Um, it's not just one or the other. It's not black and white thinking. Because um, I've definitely seen people that I know that are more avoidant they may not necessarily open up to me. Sometimes they open up more when like they're drunk. Um, or if you're, you know, I've also seen the whole, I, and I've read too, the whole like sexual stuff. A lot of times they open up when they're doing something. Um, but many times they won't open up, but they, they will be great listeners. They will listen to you. Um, sometimes they can, um, cause it, for them, it feels unsafe for them to open up. And if they do open up, they're worried about kind of being criticized and so it feels unsafe and so if you are the anxious partner because a lot of times they're attracted to the anxious partner just instead of you know let's say they open up make sure you pay attention to them and um, give them support essentially because eventually they'll learn um, as all attachment styles learn 
if you're working on yourself. Um, another thing is, um, another thing is, um, so there's something called the anxious avoidant trap. So a lot of times if the anxious partner, let's say you're avoidant and you have an anxious partner, when they pull away, a lot of times what happens is you as the avoidant, you come back in and you come back in because even though you are uncomfortable with some of the stuff in the relationship, it's more uncomfortable for you to not be in the relationship because all of a sudden all those emotions and all those feelings that you have repressed want to start surfacing and that feels very uncomfortable to you and so that's why you pull back or you pull back in. Um, people that are avoidant tend to have something called deactivating strategies because they want space. They don't want connection. Um, for them, connection can feel very unsafe. So you're unlike the, the anxious partner who connection feels safe and space feels unsafe safe um space for you feels safe um you're learning how to feel safe with the connection versus anxious is learning how to feel safe with the space um so you'll have deactivating strategies which means that these are ways so you don't get connection and so a lot of times like um they might put down their partner they might look at the flaws this is a way to deactivate they'll come up with thoughts in their heads that kind of make them get space or let's say their partner texts them they may not text them back right away um versus an anxious partner will text them back right away because they're just looking for that connection um i've been there done that um so these basically are learned habits as a kid um it might be that maybe you had a mother that was too close to enmeshed with you and you felt like you lost your identity it might be that you had a caregiver um a lot of times too is in regular relationships like your current relationship or whoever you might be attracting someone that's similar to your mom and so it's it's your unconscious mind it's, it's the way to heal your unconscious mind so you can be more present and be healed in the present day um so another thing is also as a child your your emotions might have been dismissed so a simple example is let's say you as a child had to go to school and you were sad and you didn't want to go to school or you're fearful of going to school because maybe the day before you were picked on and your mom didn't know and you didn't want to go to school and you had this like huge like fit and you didn't want to go to school and you're crying but your mom is so focused and so worried about getting to work on time and knows that you have to go to school that maybe she says something like you're fine you're okay and if this happens enough, eventually you learn how to dismiss your emotions. And so you just don't pay attention. Like your emotions don't matter, essentially. Um, and so um, another thing is, again, the high avoidance, low anxiety comes into play. Um, and again, that's your shadow aspect. The, the anxiousness is shadow. You don't know you have anxiousness behind it. You avoid it because you are anxious. That's why you're avoiding. Um, another thing is you might find it easy to leave a relationship just as much as sometimes you can stay in the relationship. But a lot of times I see like three months go by and all of a sudden the avoidant partner is gone. Um, there's so many cases where it's like three months ish. Um, so you might find it easy to leave. Um, and there's a there's a whole like anxious avoidant cycle. There's also the love addiction, love avoidance cycle, which is very similar. I can go more into depth of all that, but so pretty much like you might feel the need to leave a relationship um, because again, you don't want to be too close. Also commitment might be something that you're not able to do. I've seen people, they do stuff that's kind of distracting. So like you might be doing video games, you might be watching too much TV, but I've also noticed people that don't want commitment um, a lot of times they'll be very sexual. I've seen so many people um, in many of my different various friends throughout the years where they're just so focused on sex and they're like, this is why I need to do this and I da 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 and I've had sex with this many people. And um, for me, I see this as avoidance because they don't want commitment with that one person and so they're doing that. I'm not saying it's wrong or bad. I'm just saying it's most likely avoidant. Um, 
So, and like I said, space is definitely a factor. And I know this video is really long, so let me almost end it. I'm going to end with a quote. So the quote is, it's like kind of like a avoidant person would be saying this. So I prefer not to depend upon others or have them depend upon me. I don't like vulnerability and can have a elated sense of self. I don't like emotions. My own were dismissed in childhood. So I never learned how to be in touch with my emotions and that of others. Closeness makes me scared and I can fear losing my identity. My boundaries appear very rigid and unbreakable. Yet underneath, I am a scared child who can be very logical and a great problem solver. And with the right person, I can learn to trust and open up to others. So this is an in-depth video about avoiding attachment. So if you like this, please subscribe, like the video, and share with your friends. So thank you very much.